This is Patrick, the head wrangler here at Geocron, and today I'm going to set up an atlas that's already been installed to the TV through the HDMI port, and that port is selected on the TV so you can see it. If you see the blue light on the Atlas case, you'll know it's on, so give it 30 seconds or so to boot up. There'll be a black screen and then a white screen and then this screen. Many of the features on the Atlas are in real time, so to get those features, you need to be connected to the internet to get the data from our servers. By pressing the menu button, navigate to the internet tab, select your Wi-Fi network, and enter your password. Once connected, the Atlas will show the connection on this tab and the System tab, which is where we're going to go next, to get you the most current version of the Geochron program. It may take a minute for all areas to register that you're connected online, but just look for that little prompt at the top center. If you use an Ethernet jack, select Wired, and the process is automatic. Navigate to the System tab and select the Download System Update button. This unit is fully updated, as you can see from the green prompt there, but if not, it will inform you that it is downloading and automatically reboot the whole device when it's done. If your Atlas has not been updated for a long time, you may have to do it several times by pressing the Download Update button. Geochron rolls out a new update about once per month. The General tab shows the base maps and adjustments to those maps. I'd point out that the grayscale mode, which makes a cleaner display when you add many colored layers over the map sets, and the low res mode. If you have to install this to a 1080 HD TV, the low res map set has fewer fonts and they're larger so you can read them with the diminished resolution. This tab holds some static layers that don't require any internet, like the Sun Terminator line. Choose from normal, which is the way it looks from space, or soft, which is the twilight we experience here on the ground. Shipping lanes and air traffic routes, static air pollution data, and one of my favorites, population density. Let's see where everybody lives in the world by turning this layer up to 40% opacity and then selecting the grayscale mode we talked about on the general tab. And then hit the back button and, whoa, everybody obviously lives in Southeast Asia. Let's take a look at some of the active information that's being sent to your Geochron in the live tab. Use the gear icon to turn on the layers and set their opacity. Under weather, I've got precipitation set to 100 and cloud cover set to 70%. The other layers and menus are off at the moment. Backing up, enable weather by selecting the slider button. If it's green, it's on. It may take a moment to download the latest information from our server. In this map view, you can see that the green is precipitation and the gray is cloud cover at the time I'm recording this video. And the International Space Station has been added for effect in the South Atlantic at the moment. Press the menu button and let's take a look at where some satellites are under the Live tab and then down to Satellites. I'm selecting the last 30 days of launches and enabling the Show Future slider and the Show Info slider. Press the Back button, enable the layer, and let's take a look at the live location of 26 satellites that were launched in the last 30 days. Wow! Most people I show this to are shocked at how many satellites there are, but to really get their attention, open SpaceX. Press the menu button and the gear icon over live commercial flights. Here you can select by carrier, and FedEx is really busy this time of day, so let's enable that one. Press the back button and enable it on the map. FedEx has 41 flights of the 8,644 flights in the air today, and I see they're mostly in North America and arcing over the Atlantic, heading west. Things can get a bit busy on the map, as you can see, so I'm going to disable the weather to clear it up a bit. Navigate to the Premium tab to see what's there. As of this recording in 2021, we're just getting started on a lot of layers that appeal to specific audiences, like the Earthquake layer. That you can see here under the gear icon. I've set up this layer to show the newest earthquakes on top and brightly, then fade out as they get older, up to five days old. Enable the earthquake layer with a slider and press the back button to see the whole map. <laughs> that looks awesome and a little scary. Appealing to a very specific audience, we have our ham radio bundle under the premium tab today. I'm not going to get into the details on this layer, but let's enable solar weather, DX spotting, and linear AMSAT satellites. All of these are adjustable behind their gear icon. Man, that is an active layer. Those are real-time conversations traveling through the ionosphere between ham radio operators right now. 
To show the time specific to your time zone, go to the time tab and select your time zone and region. Now, the regions are important because some don't practice daylight savings time. I'm in time zone U. And now you can see PST for Pacific time zone, that's where I am, displayed in the lower left corner of the map. If you want to see UTC listed below your local time, that's Zulu time, or London actually, you could set that up in the System tab, along with your unit of measurement and unlimited layered downloads. A word about that. Your Geochron will, by default, download every live layer whether you're viewing it or not. If you find your Geochron to be a bit sluggish, turn off the unlimited layer download so it has less to think about. When it's turned off, it may take longer to activate layers that you weren't using previously because it has to download them. But overall, the unit will operate more quickly when unlimited layer download is turned off. And coming back to where we began, the download system update button. As I said, we're pushing new material and features to our atlases all the time, but we won't force an update if the atlas has an active screen. We just hate it when Microsoft decides to interrupt our day and force an update so we don't do it for the Geochron. And that is way too busy and messy for my liking, but I've shown you how to see the layers and how you can turn them on and off and adjust their opacity. Around here we say you can salt to taste on the Geochron. Lastly, the power button is a shortcut to a lot of system features like sleep, check for update, and shutting down or restarting the device. Clear settings will wipe all your settings but maintain the software version that you have, and a full factory reset will restore your Geochron to what it was out of the box. Use that one carefully. If you'd like the Geochron to power on from your remote, just put it to sleep. The Geochron will still be on, listening for an on command from the remote, but the screen will be dark. Going to sleep now, the Geochron will count down 30 seconds, then go gently into that good night.